hey guys i hope that i'm live right now you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know hello everyone i hope that i'm live right now if you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video please do let me know all clear great good evening everyone good evening good evening cannot hear you um so please guys let me know uh there's no issues with the audio am i right everything's good okay great great we'll be waiting for five more minutes so that everyone is able to join and then we'll start off with our today's class okay Today we'll be starting off with our APIs. So for our today's class, there are two things that we are going to deal with. Okay. First of all, we are going to deal with APIs and then many of the people uh, have asked me to provide a roadmap for a full stack web development. So what are the things that you need to learn and how to get into a big tech firm or even start your own freelancing as well. So these will be the two things that uh, we will be discussing today. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So the two things that we'll be dealing up with today will be, uh, we'll be starting off with our APIs. Just a brief introduction on APIs, uh, a brief understanding on APIs as well. Okay. And then we'll be continuing off with uh, learning about what full stack web development is, what are the different technologies that you need to learn currently to become a full stack web developer or a front end or a back end engineer as well. Uh, how to make yourself stand out from the rest of the crowd and uh, how to apply to different jobs, internships, uh, trainings, all these kind of stuff that will be something that we'll be answering today. Okay. Um, okay, great. The deadline for the project itself will be uh, talking about tomorrow itself, not right now. Okay. <laughs> no issues with that see um that's the thing like of the main goal of these boot camps is to help guide you at the end of the day so like we will be doing it today as well tomorrow we'll be working on the project so the project is ready i've already worked upon it it's up and running so it will be a very simple project we'll be having a login page and a register page where your users will be able to provide their email ids their names and their password and you will be able to log in a particular user and a user will be able to register themselves as well so you'll be taking up their uh, password whether it is working or not and all these kind of stuff okay So again, we have an Android development bootcamp in the future. Uh, Ayush will surely take that into consideration as well. Uh, some of the considerations that uh, we are getting as of this particular moment is uh, we are currently partnering up with Postman. So Postman is one of the leading uh, API management tools that is currently there in the industry. Whenever you will be dealing with any kind of uh, full stack project or you're going into corporate as well. So currently I've worked into four different companies everywhere postman was being used for api testing and all those kind of stuff so we have contacted postman and we'll be organizing some one day tutorials and seven day boot camps via postman directly from the company themselves and there will be some swags there will be some certificates offered by them so we are currently working with them as well we will be bringing more people in to conduct more companies more boot camps more events so that you guys are able to enjoy at the same point of time okay uh, we are currently planning with the data structures and algorithms and computer programming boot camps as well. So that will be taken up by Ashish Modi in the future. Uh, cyber security boot camp. Uh, we had some of the boot camp scheduled previously as well. So of course we'll be having something in the future. Okay. So after completing full stack web development course, we'll get some placement offers. So we have a hundred percent placement and guarantee program as well. So yes, of course. Due to some issues with the internet, I was not able to attend yesterday's live session. So what can you do? Please help me with the same. Uh, Bhuvneshwar, uh, see the thing is that you still have time to watch the video and fill up your attendance. So just do that. Okay. I 
IoT boot camp, Java boot camp. Okay, so Java we will be releasing it very soon. So within I think so from 30th of this month, 30th June itself, 30, we will be releasing a full course on Java from the absolute basics to the most advanced level. Okay, so we are ready with the Java course for free. We won't be charging anything. We have already released one on C++ that has been made by a particular person from Cisco. The Java program is currently made by two people. One is currently working in Barclays and the second one is currently working in uh, Deloitte. So we will be releasing it for free so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so the DevTown certificate that is, I think so the, have you got, uh, guys got the messages on your WhatsApp group today that the bootcamp has started? Please let me know. Have you guys, Ashish, the message has been sent to all the WhatsApp groups, am I right? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so just me let me repeat about the project once again okay so the project itself that we are currently going to do today uh, tomorrow will be based it will be very simple project we'll be using node.js we'll be using express we'll be using javascript we'll be using some new npm libraries as well we'll be creating our very own database okay and we'll be using that to make a basic login page just like you are able to go to any website you register on any website using their email name and password similarly you are having uh, your after your email name and password you didn't go into the login page and then you log in into the platform so we will be doing that so you don't have to worry about it Akshay Sony yes of course we have that because that is why we have started the program and you share your Insta ID, Arjun, it's down in the description of the video itself. My own Insta ID, DevTown's Insta ID, we are having the LinkedIn IDs as well, so you can definitely join us from right over there. Okay. Okay, so should we start off with our today's class? Please let me know, guys. Should we start off with our today's class, guys? Please let me know. Okay, so let's get started uh, right away, guys. First, again, what we are going to do today, just let me recap that once again. We are going to learn about APIs. Okay, it's very important that we are able to learn about APIs. And then we'll be looking at what is full stack web development. We'll be learning about full stack web development. What are the different tools and technologies that you need to learn to become a hireable at the end of the day, employable as a full stack web developer. So this is the two things that we'll be discussing, uh, discussing about today. Okay, so should we start? Great. So let's get started right away, guys. Let me open up the PPT that I've currently made, like it's just two pages. So <laughs> give me a second. So APIs, uh, can somebody let me know what is the full form of API? Can somebody let me know what is the full form of API guys? Up to that point of time, I'm just opening up the live chat on my phone. Uh, till then, can somebody let me know what is APIs? What is the full form of APIs? We'll not be dealing with MongoDB in this bootcamp because uh, then the project will be extremely long and you won't be able to understand mongodb at the end of the day but yes we'll be using a database tomorrow in the project and i will be explaining you at that point of time itself so application programming interface that's that's great so what do you mean by apis let's let's try to understand that using the terminology that we have already learned about okay so for example let me just select everything and delete it okay so right over here we have learned that any website we can think about it as a restaurant okay we can think about any website as a restaurant so there is a starting position itself there's a starting place where you are having the tables okay you are having the chairs you are having the uh, good quality lighting and everything the curtains let, let me create a light like this is a light 
okay so it's beautiful it's everything and that you consider as your uh, front end okay that is your front end or your client side itself then you are having the second half that is your kitchen so your kitchen basically contains the table uh, the utensils that you are having so the plates the bowls that you are having the utensils like the uh, spoons and spatulas that you are having you are having a burner as the uh, end right over here so and then you are able to cook your food right over here so that's your kitchen that is the back end and then you are having your uh, refrigerator where you are storing all the spices and everything and that you consider as your uh, database okay so these are the three things that you are able to see from right over here now how is the front end how is the front end going to talk with the back end itself how is the front end going to talk with the back end okay for that you are having your servers okay the people who serve the different food so like this is a towel and uh, the plate itself and the bow tie right over here so you are having the waiters the servers who are able to communicate between the front end and the back end okay so what happens basically is that you have a menu on your uh, front okay you are having a menu on your bench okay this is the menu right over here so you are having various different options that you have at any point of time now you will be choosing something from that option you will be telling the waiter that okay this is what i want at the end of the day your waiter will then go back to the back end itself that is the kitchen it will tell the server the, it's the application that is your chef okay that is your chef right over here that okay this particular person wants okay so let me create a mustache right over here it should look like a chef it will tell the uh, chef that okay this is the uh, thing that the client wants as of this particular moment your chef that is your application will create the entire thing okay will create the entire food for you and then it will give it to the servo that is the uh, waiter once again and the waiter will then deliver that food back to you okay so this is the same work as an api okay the application programming interface it basically connects the front end to the back end any type of request that the front end is able to make it will make it to the api itself the api will then take that request and give it to the uh, cook okay that is the application then the server itself that is the application that you have created in the server would do something with that request okay once that request has been processed it will create a response and that response will again be given to your api and that api will then take that response back to the front end and you will be able to see it on your screen are you able to understand the use of api please let me know are you guys able to understand the use of api please let me know guys are you guys able to understand the use of api please let me know So it's extremely simple okay you are having your front end your front end wants to communicate with the back end your client your user your person who is sitting in the restaurant wants to place an order to the chef itself now the chef isn't going to come to your table this isn't ratatouille but the chef is coming to your table to take your orders okay there is someone who needs to communicate between the kitchen and the front end okay so that is the work of the apis there need to be someone that is able to take the food from the kitchen and give it to you that is the work of the api okay are you guys able to understand server is the kitchen okay server is the kitchen okay your restaurant is the front end okay your restaurant is the front end your api is your like waiter okay your api is your waiter as easy as possible to understand guys nothing too complicated this thing about a restaurant how a restaurant functions you will easily be able to understand about apis okay this is a normal restaurant a fancy restaurant you're having a uh, restaurant you're having uh okay how is an api different from a server a, sh a chef cannot sit inside the mouth of a waiter and cook the food he needs a kitchen okay your chef is nothing else but the application that you have developed okay he needs a kitchen to work out of the kitchen itself is the server the server is nothing else but uh, uh, 
computer where your code lives similarly the server is basically the kitchen okay the chef cannot sit in the mouth of a waiter and cook the food he needs the utensils he needs the space okay so that is the work of a server that is the work of a kitchen okay the work of a waiter is to communicate between the user that is currently sitting on the table and the chef and that is the basic work of that particular uh, waiter are you able to understand right now like how can you confuse between a server and a waiter okay as simple as that are you guys able to understand please let me know are you guys able to understand please let me know guys great so now i think so it's much more understandable okay this there should be any confusion there shouldn't be any confusion at as of this particular moment okay now there are some things that are involved with a uh, uh, api okay there are some important concepts that is involved with an api okay it's endpoint paths parameters and authentication these are the four things that are involved with an api and we are going to learn about all these different things okay endpoint paths parameters and authentication we will be learning about all these four things that are associated with apis okay using some api examples of course we need to learn via examples that's why we are here right now okay so let's go back to our uh, website okay so this is one of the websites that we have okay kanye.res i'm sending you the link as well in the live chat so this is the website right over here kanye.west okay now <clears throat> now what we are going to do is this is one of the apis that we are going to see right now this is a very simple api guys the api is http api.kanye.rest it does nothing else okay it does nothing else but provides you with a quote given by Kanye West. So Kanye West, uh, if you guys don't know, is one of the major black singers in America, right? As of this particular moment. And uh, one of the owners of Yeezys as well. That is, again, uh, one of the largest uh, shoe, designer shoe branded sort of uh, thing. <laughs> okay, I have no idea. This is what I was able to Google about him. <laughs> and he has some uh, like cook quotes that like he it tends to say things that uh, shouldn't be said at any point of time. So he's a very funny guy as well. Uh, so this is a particular API that does nothing else. Okay, uh, it just provides you a random quote by Kanye West. That's it. Okay, it provides you with a random quote by Kanye West. Okay, so right now what we are going to do is this is a website. Okay, so this is your front end. Okay, this is your front end. Okay, yeah. Again, an important achievement of his life. He was the ex-husband of Kim Kardashian. <laughs> okay, great. So you are having this particular website right over here. Again, I think so. Lakshmi is coming to uh, YouTube for the very first time. So Lakshmi, I will help you out with the same. This is a YouTube video. You can increase the quality of the video by going into the settings itself. Okay. Uh, okay one more thing. So uh, I will just send out the PPTs. Yeah. So do one thing. Just uh, there is one PPT on uh, Canva right now called as uh, JavaScript. Okay, basic JavaScript. Just the first few PPTs itself. Just take that PPT and send it to the Discord channel. I'm currently in a bootcamp right now, so they are sending. They're telling me to send it right now itself. That's why. Basic JavaScript. It's basic JavaScript. It would be in the first four rows itself. Not on WhatsApp. Not on WhatsApp. Only on Discord. Only on Discord itself. Okay. Okay. So your PPT as well will be sent today on uh, the Discord channel. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is a website. So re Kanye dot rest. The Kanye dot rest as it's a website. Okay. Is www dot Kanye dot west. Okay. So this is a website itself. Now this 
is the API endpoint. Okay, this is a point endpoint. So if you are taking this particular link, HTTPS API dot Kanye dot rest. Okay, this is the website. Kanye dot rest is a website. Okay, but when you are having API dot Kanye dot rest, that is the API that is there. This is called as an API endpoint. If you are loading this on the website, okay, if you are loading, if you are trying to load API dot Kanye dot rest on your website, okay, you will be able to see that it just returns a JavaScript. This this is called as a JavaScript object. Object. Okay, this is called as a JavaScript object, and this is called as JSON. Okay, this is called as JSON data. So this API will only return some data to you. That is, every time you will reload this page, you will get a new quote by uh, Kanye. But this is not your front end. Okay, this is just a API data. Okay, this is just just a JSON data right over here. Okay. Are you guys able to understand this? This is not a website. So this is a website where whatever code that was there is coming in an uh, HTML page. Okay, this is an HTML page that is currently there, and you are able to get the information passed on to your website to your front end right over here. Okay, as you are able to see, everything is very beautiful. This is not a JSON. Uh, data okay this is a website which is currently connected to the api now you cannot connect directly to a server you cannot connect directly to a server you connect through an api and api helps you to change data to exchange data itself and this api.kanye.rest is the end point okay this particular link this link is the end point right over here this is where you want to hit up and take the um, uh, like you want to hit this particular api and this particular endpoint and take the json data from right over here and then you show then you show this json data on your website you show this json data on your website okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know don't get ahead of yourself right now we are discussing about endpoints we are not reaching paths right now we are discussing just upon endpoints okay are you guys able to understand just about the endpoint itself this is an endpoint this is an api okay what is the difference between an api and a rest api okay so what happens is there are different ways in which like the apis can be structured to one of the ways is your rest uh way like restful apis itself now restful apis the full form for the same is representational structure transfers okay state transfer representational state transfer so now that is a very in-depth topic and you won't be able to understand it as of this particular moment but this is one of the most used uh, formats of creating an api as of this particular moment okay Endpoint is a bit confusing. Okay, try to understand this. The server right over here, the, the waiter that is currently there right over here, you are only able to talk. So every table has its very own waiter. Okay, every table has its very own waiter. Just think about it in such a way. Okay, now you can only talk to that particular waiter. Okay, whenever you want to get some information, like, okay, how long is uh, my order pending or something like that? Like, I gave an order 15 minutes ago, when will it come to my table? So you'll be asking that waiter itself. Okay, think about that waiter as the end point. Okay, that waiter as the end point, that URL as the end point itself. That is where you have to hit to get the data. Okay, that is where you have to send the request to get the data itself. Now, the data, the food that is going to come to you, the food that is going to come to you at the end of the day will come to you in the json format or javascript object format think about it in such a way okay the data that is going to come to you is not going to be as a website it is just going to be a json data okay this is called as a json data this format of data itself this format of data that oh shit i just closed it up 
This format of data that you are able to see right over here is called as a JSON data or JavaScript object. Like if you want to go into JSON itself, you can call it as a JavaScript object itself. So you get your data in such a way. Okay, the food that is going to come to you is in such a way itself. Yes, you can get the data into ways, different ways as well. But this is the most common way in which you are going to get your food. Okay. Are you guys able to understand? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand? Please let me know, guys. Yes, of course, there are more than one APIs. We will be looking at it uh, as of this particular moment, guys. Okay, don't worry about it. We will be looking into it. Uh, JSON is basically think of it as JavaScript object itself. Okay, these are JavaScript objects that you're able to see right over here. Okay, this is called as a JavaScript object. It's like a key value pair that is currently there. You're having the key, okay, that what this particular value is and then the value right over here. Okay. Okay, great. What is the difference between an API and a JSON? It's the same difference between your waiter and your food. You cannot eat your waiter, otherwise we'll just go into jail. <laughs> Somebody asked what? Guys, just apply your brains for one second before asking something. API, okay, application programming interface is the waiter. And JSON is the food that is you are going to get at the end of the day. Okay, that is the response that you are getting from the server itself. That the data that you are able to get. Okay, you cannot eat your APIs. Okay, you cannot eat your waiter. Okay, okay, <laughs> great. Uh, uh, what is the use of Kanye dot rest in web development? API okay so the API itself that you are able to see right over here api.kanye.res that is basically get this particular code okay this code that is whenever you are reloading this particular page okay I just whenever you are reloading this particular page you are able to see that the code is changing the world is our family again I will reload this particular page I spoke to Dave Chappell for two hours this morning he's our modern day Who's... I don't know how to spell that. Okay. So right, right over here, what is happening is this is your front end. Okay. This data that is currently coming right over here, this codes obviously coming from hitting that API again and again. Okay. APIs, why APIs are made? Let's try to understand that. APIs are made so that our server can, one server can talk to another server as well. One server, for example, right now I want some data. Okay. Some data about weather. So if you go to, let's say, uh, Google weather itself. Okay. So you are able to see that Google is able to provide us with uh, weather right over here. Okay. That is 31 degrees Celsius in Gurgaon, Haryana. And you are able to see all the weather and everything right over here. Now you need to understand one thing that Google that has no setup throughout the entire world where it is able to get like measure okay so for example in Gurgaon as well there is a google center in Jamnagar as well there's a google center in Bangalore as well there's a google center in Patna as well there's a google center and Nagpur as well there's a google center it's not like that there's not centers around the world where google has set up where it is getting like it is taking in okay every single day this is the temperature and feeding it up right over here in its module okay this is not happening google does not have this data what it is doing is there is another website called as weather.com as you are able to see down below in very small letters right over here. This data is coming from hitting the APIs on weather.com. So weather.com is basically a like a website that has centers around the world to take up the um, like the sensor data of the temperature itself and that API it has created an API that you will be able to use so if you are just like searching for that I think so you should be able to find the API as well okay so let's go to data rights or something like that and you should be able to find the API from right over here and Google is basically hitting the API of weather.com it is hitting the API of another website to get the data and it is just showing you the data. So Google isn't having anything in its backend. Google does not have anything in its backend that is collecting the data from various sources. It just, it is just hitting in the backend. It is just hitting another API to get the data from them. And it is showing you the data right over here. Okay. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. 
यू आर एल यू हैव ऑफ अ वेबसाइट ओके यू गो टू अ वेबसाइट यू गो टू गूगल डॉट कॉम यूजिंग अ यू आर एल एंड ए पी आई जस्ट गिवज यू द रॉ डेटा एंड ए पी आई विल ओनली गिव यू द डेटा इट डज नॉट एज एनी वेबसाइट इट इज इट डज नॉट इज नॉट अ डेटा इट विल जस्ट गिव यू सम जेस ऑन डेटा दैट यू कैन देन क्रिएट इन टू अ वेबसाइट इट सेल्फ यूजिंग दैट डेटा है ओके आर यू गाइज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस प्लीज लेट मी नो okay so that is basically an end point so what google is currently doing is it is hitting the end point of weather.com to get the data from there okay so that is basically what you mean by a end point or a api okay yes there's a google api as well for example whenever you are using your uber whenever you are using zomato whether you are using um um something else as well like ola or something okay so you, they are showing you a website okay they they are showing you a map in which you are able to track your ride and everything so that as well is a api by google it's an api by google that charges you 6 lakh rupees every single month to a business to use it okay so that is again an api so every api is not free right now what the api that we saw right over here it's not a free api you have to pay for most of the apis because somebody is maintaining it somebody is maintaining the code for that api somebody is maintaining the data for that api so most apis are not free to use twitter has its own apis facebook has its own apis and you can use it for various different purposes like i said uber and ola does not has its own satellites that they are able to use to be able to track you guys okay so they pay google they pay uh, the google maps that is the main division to be able to get the access to those apis that they are able to use and then show it to you guys okay Hitting means fetching data from a server. That's absolutely correct. Success achievers. We, I'm tired. Okay. Uh, how can we get a free API to use for our projects? You have to search for that, of course. The search for whatever your use is. The search for that particular API. You will be able to get one or two free APIs, but the quality of the data wouldn't be that great. but for smaller projects it's more than sufficient you don't have to do anything for the same okay now the first point that we have covered is end point okay that is the url itself that is currently there the api url the next thing is paths okay so we have already studied about paths if you remember while creating our website do you guys remember that while creating our website we learned about paths we do told is as routes r o u t s not r w o t s okay r o u t s not r w o t s okay paths that we have already seen so forward slash about me page forward slash login page forward slash contact us page just forward slash so these were different paths that lead you to different websites at any point of time okay not r w o t okay not r w o t r o u t okay r o u t okay so you are having different paths at any point of time itself similarly for apis as well sometimes you might want from the same api different kind of data from the same api you have only one api that exists you want different kind of data itself like you are having just one url that is google.com you are having one url that is google.com you want to go to the about me page so you are having different path you want to go to the um, contact us page that is a different path you want to go to the career page then there is a different path and so on and so forth similarly in apis as well there is one end point but you might want different kind of data okay from that end point so for that you are having different paths that exist from that end point itself so let us go and look at the example for this so this is one more um, like website that is currently there one more api that is so this is a website it provides a free api that basically generates jokes for you okay this basically generate jokes for you so right over here if i have if i go down okay joke types id blah 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 end point okay so right over here you are able to get see this particular end point right over here okay you are having get http blah 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 this is the end point that you are able to see okay, let me just copy this from right over here and paste it on the website okay so you are able to see that this does not work okay 
this does not work right over here this is not able to give me any kind of information that i need the information that i'm not able to get from right over here See guys, if it is buffering, it will be for one or two seconds. You can be patient for that amount of time itself. Okay. If it's buffering, it would be for just one or two seconds. So you can be patient for that particular point of time. Am I right? Guys, if it's buffering at any point of time, okay, it will be just for one or two seconds. Okay. So you can be patient for that particular point of time. Okay. If it's for like almost 30 seconds or 10 seconds or 15 seconds, then go and spam the entire live chat. Up to that particular point of time, just write it once and that's it. Okay. I'm able to understand. I will wait for that particular point of time. Okay. No, Siri is not an API. Okay, so let's continue from right over here itself. As you are able to see, this uh, API didn't work. As you are able to see, if I'm copying this API from right over here and pasting it on the website itself, okay, you are able to see that this is not like it's getting me an error, okay. <clears throat> It's getting me an error is because to true message, no matching joke found caused by the no jokes found that pro matches your filters and so on and so forth. So this is not working as of this particular moment. Okay. So what we want to do as of this particular point is we want to find out why this is not working. This is an end point. This is an end point. But why are we not getting the joke? Why are we getting that? Uh, this is an error right over here. Okay. So guys, please focus upon what I'm teaching right now. I will answer your questions, but this is not the time. I'm teaching something, focus upon it. But at later point of time, then you will be saying, Sir, sir, I couldn't understand, sir. Sir, can you repeat? <laughs> so focus upon what I'm teaching, when I'm teaching. I'll be giving you time. I'm trying to resolve as much queries as possible. But when I'm giving you time, at that point of time, ask the questions. Right now, focus upon what I'm teaching, okay? You, will you will you be able to focus upon what I'm teaching right now, guys? Will you be able to focus upon what I'm teaching? Great. So let's continue then. Okay, so this is not working. Why this is the case? Because right now this API, this is the end point. That's absolutely correct. This is the end point right over here. But we need to understand, okay, we need to understand the different, okay, paths that exist. So what happens is you are able to go above as well. You can choose the subcategory, okay, you can choose a category, okay. So I want a programming joke, okay. I want a single joke itself. I want it in English, okay. Flags, okay, it should not be NFSFW, so not uh, friendly for work itself. It should not be religious, sexist, racist, explicit, okay. And then that is the joke. So right over here, what, what is happening is you are having, okay, you are sending some request. Okay. So for example, right over here, if I'm just uh, removing everything from right over here, okay, I'm just keeping it as single and uh, I'm doing a submit right over here. Okay. Okay. Jokes uh, submission are currently unavailable. So I will have to come up right over here itself, no issues. I have to do it for myself. Let's see if this works or not. Okay. So right over here, what happens is, uh, this is the end point. Okay. The end point is basically your, uh, V2 dot that we have already seen. Okay. So this is your end point right over here. You're having V2 dot jokes, uh, API dot dev slash joke is your API right over here. 
now just like you are having like uh, the forward slash uh, about me forward slash contact me pages when you were creating different parts to go into different uh, websites as well again this very similar manner right over here after the api after joke you are writing programming to take you to the programming uh, joke itself okay if you want to go into another joke you want to go into m i uh, let's say you want to go into pun joke right over here you just have to replace the programming with pun okay so it will give you a joke that is a pun right over here okay if you want to go into programming once again so you just have to go back to programming okay you just have to change the payload that is currently there the the um uh, extension that is currently there the path that is currently there at the end of the day okay and you are able to see from right over here that the jokes are changing uh, so for example uh, the setup okay hey wanna hear a joke so passing html with regex okay so you are having like the jokes are currently there for programming right over here so you are having different paths that you are having at any point of time you can create different paths for an api to get different kinds of jokes you can have any uh so if you're taking up any jokes okay that is you want to take up a joke from any uh, category itself so that will give you a joke from any category okay and you are having various different parts so you are having uh, misc you are having your programming you are having dark jokes you are having pun smoky christmas jokes so you are having different kinds of parts that you can put up inside an api endpoint to get different kinds of jokes to get different kinds of results now how are you going to create these parts okay so when you are creating a website you have to pre-think about everything okay so we need to have um, an endpoint for contact me page so we need to have to a path for contact me we need to have a path for let's say about me so you have to think about it you have to create the path in the server and that is how you would proceed further with that similarly in apis as well when you want to create a path when you want to create uh, another api you need to know that okay somebody might ask for this type of information this category of joke from me so according to that you create different paths at the endpoint itself that the users can use are you guys able to understand please let me know guys are you guys able to understand paths in apis please let me know are you guys able to understand paths in apis please let me know guys do you guys have any any problems with paths in apis please let me know Can we brute force API endpoints in website to get juicy or tokens they present in the JSON? Yes, of course, we, you can do that. I'm not a ethical hacker, but yeah, I'm familiar with that as well. But that is not a good practice, okay? You should never do that. API is a language independent guys because like it's just sending you a JSON reply so of course it's language independent it's not dependent upon any language at the end of the day okay is zoom API free initially for development yes but for production it's not free okay so for our product as well we use the zoom API itself that is the reason why I know Now, when you are having a path, okay, when you have learned about paths right now, so you are able to see that you have to predefine the path, okay? You want to predefine the path itself that, okay, so this is a particular path that a user can take. But maybe at any point of time, um, so for example, when uh, somebody, a particular person is doing a Google search, okay, some particular person is doing a Google search at any point of time. So you don't know, you cannot predict exactly what that particular person is going to write. Okay, so you cannot create a 
predefined paths that the question uh, that the per, per, that the person is going to create at any point of time itself that the person is going to write at any point of time so that is the point when you are having parameters okay that is the point when you are having parameters so parameters are basically like attributes associated with a particular end point okay so for example a particular person wants a joke that basically contains a particular word like bug okay so for example any joke that contains the word bug okay this is what i want so related to programming but it should contain the word bug inside of it so how am i going to do that okay so for that you need parameters you need to let the person ask questions okay so how do you have a parameter you put up a question mark so i think so you will not be able to see it right over here so i need to write it somewhere where you are able to see it clearly let me just remove everything from right over here Let me increase the size to let's six. Are you guys able to see this uh, URL? Please let me know. Are you guys able to see this URL? Please let me know, guys. I think so. This URL should be visible to you. Great. So this is basically your path. Okay, this is your path that. So this is the path that you are having as of this particular moment. Now, sometimes you don't want just the path itself. You don't want just the path itself. You want a parameter to be associated that the particular person is able to get a joke that contains a particular word. So for that, you will have a question mark. A parameter starts with a question mark itself. Okay, it's not a fixed path that you have defined predefined at the end of the day so it starts off with a question mark then the criteria that you want to it to fulfill so contains it should contains this particular joke should contain is equals to and then you want it to contain bug okay you want it to contain bug at the end so it will look something like this as you are able to see it will look like okay so you're having the api endpoint then you're having the pair uh, Paths that is any joke and it should contain a bug. So this would be the entire API that you will be running. Okay, to get a joke, to get any joke that has the word bug inside of it. Okay, so that is called as a parameter. A parameter isn't something that you can fix from the start. It is. It isn't something that you can predict from the start. Okay, it is something that the user can put it up. Can put it up anything. So you need to define some conditions that the parameters should fulfill. So it should contain bug. So if I'm going back right over here, if I'm doing any question mark contains, I think so it should be contains itself and then B U G bug. As you are able to see, uh, because light attracts bugs. Okay, so you are having bug in your joke itself. Are you guys able to see this? as i've put up contains bug so you are able to see that it contains bug at the end of the day you can change this to let's say um, add okay so contains add so it will give you another uh, like joke and you will be able to find add right over here let's just search for add so it's coming in daddy but you are having the word add inside of it at the end of the day okay so are you able to understand this are you able to understand the use of parameters guys please let me know are you guys able to understand the use of parameters? Please let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand the use of parameters? Please let me know, guys, and why it is so important. Yes, for static websites, you don't know, need an API. You only need APIs for a dynamic website itself because you need to pass on some information. You need to show some information as well. Okay. Yeah, it's like a search option and that's absolutely clever. Path and route are the exact same thing, guys. That's why I'm using it interchangeably. great amazing guys amazing now the next thing is authentication although i cannot show you authentication because i also don't have any authenticated apis running with me as of this particular moment but i will just make you understand something so not every api is open for everyone to use okay not every api is open for everyone to use at the end of the day 
okay every api has its own documentation for example for this jokes api this is the documentation that you are having right over here you can just go through this entire uh, page okay you can just go through this entire page and you will be able to find the entire documentation for the api itself and you will be able to understand how to use it at the end of the day and every api is totally different it will have totally different parameters it will have totally different routes it will have totally different paths at the end of the day now not every api is open for everyone to use some apis are only limited so for example if google made its api access to be public for anyone to use so anyone can create a google the very next day an entire company the very next day itself just hit the api of google and use it so they have some authentication as well that only these websites only the websites that are currently on the google domain will be able to access the apis only a only websites that have paid google and have some authentication tokens associated with them just think about it as id and passwords associated with them will be able to access the g maps that is google maps api themselves so that is the basic thing okay you have some authentication at the end of the day you need to authenticate whether this website okay whether this website is authenticated to use this api or not okay so that is basically the last point that is authentication not every api is open for everyone to use some of them are but not everyone okay so that is what you use for authentication are you guys able to understand this please let me know If you guys able to understand please let me know guys so oh, not every api is like this you are able to just head it up and use it at the end of the day okay some apis you need some authentication you need to be like you need to like have some access to that uh, api so for example you don't have the access to my instagram id and so you need my id and password to be able to get access to my insta account similarly to get access to the data from an api you need to have some id and password that is basically called as uh, tokens okay the authentication tokens that exist okay so uh, don't have that so if you don't have that you are not able to access okay you are not able to access the data from that api even though you have the api you will not be able to access the data because you are not authenticated you are not authenticated to access an uh, account you to access an insta account you need an id and password similarly to access the data from an api you need an authentication token if you don't have that authentication token you will not be able to access the data from the api okay Yes, paid APIs for paid APIs you get the authentication token. We yes, it means security at the end of the day. Yeah. Like API keys, yes, you can think about it. like API keys, then you're having authentication tokens, JWT tokens, uh, then there are various other things as well. And right now in blockchain, uh, you're having like blocks itself that is currently there for authentication. So there are a lot mean number of things that you can use, of course, but just an overall sense that I'm telling you guys right now. Okay. What is authentication? Authentication is basically, do you have the ID and password? Do you have the access to this particular API? That is called as authentication. It's an English word. It's not, so you can search for it in dictionary. It's an English word. It's not something that is limited to IT. It's a normal English word itself. Okay. No, you cannot take path from one API and parameter from another API. <laughs> it's not the, it's the same as saying that I will get or give order to one waiter who is currently serving me and then I will give the tip to some other waiter. It's not like that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I will cry after listening to this. I will just ignore it for right now. Okay. Okay, so that, that is done right now. Okay, 
So let's get back to understanding about full stack and what are the different technologies that you need to learn at uh, okay. Okay. So already we have learned about a lot many number of things up to this point of time and we are going to start off with our project from tomorrow onwards so before doing that i would like you guys to understand um what are the different things that are involved for you to become a full stack web developer what is a full stack web developer what is a back-end engineer what is a front-end engineer and why you of course as a fresher needs to need to be a full stack engineer instead of anything else okay so let's get started with that the first thing is you're having various different parts of an in as of, of an engineer that is possible the first one is a front-end engineer okay the second one is a back-end engineer the third one is a devops engineer and the last one is a cloud computing engineer okay so these are all the different engineers that are present in the web development field okay and these are the major engineers that will be present anywhere now uh, i think so most of you okay most of you are currently coming to the boot camps are freshers okay they are in college or have recently graduated as well now these are specialized jobs okay these are specialized job a front end engineer a back end engineer devops engineer cloud computing engineer these are uh, fresher these are not fresher jobs these are jobs for some people who are currently going and have some experience in front end engineering or back end engineering and now they have been assigned to a particular team where they are working upon that so i will explain you what is front end what is back end what is devops what is cloud computing right now but i assume that most of you are freshers as of the this particular moment now what is front-end web development okay so you'll be learning with like html okay css javascript then you'll be going with tailwind css bootstrap css then you will be going with react js that is a javascript framework redux okay hooks routes all these topics so this is basically what you will be learning as a front-end engineer at the end of the day if you want to go into front-end engineering now again you guys will not be able to apply to a front-end engineering position because you are a fresher okay for you guys it will be a software engineering position or a full stack web development position now just think about it okay so front-end basically means designing and creating the front end designing and creating the front end of a website okay whatever i'm writing right over here whatever tools that i'm writing right over here these are the tools that is most likely to get you hired okay don't think about anything else don't ask me what about angular what about this what about that everything else the usage is less than 30 percent 80% of all the industries are using these technologies. So of course I will be telling you guys to learn this. Anything else that is used by less than 20% of the industry, less than 20%. So these are the mostly used technologies that is guaranteed to get you hired at the end of the day. So start off with something easy. Okay, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Now, don't tell me that, sir, I know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I should get an internship. I learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript when I was in 10th standard. I didn't get any internship at that point of time. And you are in college. You are going to pass out in a few years. Don't think that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is enough. Even learning all this won't get you an internship. Okay, I will tell you guys about that as well. Okay. Uh, I will be answering your question one by one once I've explained everything. Keep your questions in mind. Okay, write it down somewhere. I will give you some time. I will answer all your questions for you. Okay, don't worry about it. First, listen to me properly. 
नेक्स्ट इज योर बैक सो दिस फ्रंट एंड इंजीनियरिंग बेसिकली हेल्प्स यू क्रिएट दी फ्रंट एंड ऑफ द रेस्टोरेंट इट सेल्फ वेर दी पीपल आर गोइंग टू सेट एंड ईट दैट इज द वेबसाइट दैट यू आर एबल टू सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन दिस वेबसाइट दैट यू आर एबल टू सी फॉर एग्जाम्पल अवर वेबसाइट दैट यू हैव क्रिएटेड दिस मोर यू आर एबल टू सी राइट अवर शो दिस ब्यूटिफुल वेबसाइट दैट यू आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट दैट विल बी क्रिएटिंग यूजिंग एस टी एम एल सी एस एस जावा स्क्रेप टेलविन सी एस एस बूट स्ट्रैप सी एस एस रियाक्ट रीडक्स हुक्स राउट्स दिस इज दी एट लीस्ट दैट यू नीड टू to a very good level including projects as well then next is back end web development okay the next is back end web development for back end web development you need to start off with again node js okay node js express mongo db that should be more than sufficient for back end engineering apis okay apis uh, restful apis you should learn about a uh, microservice architecture okay so microservice architectures as well okay you need to start off with the basics so whatever we have learned in this boot camp is the utmost basics we have just given you a taste of these technologies these technologies are very 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 in depth technologies that exist right over here you need to learn everything to a very huge extent okay you need to start off with node js express whatever i have taught you guys is the at most basics there's a lot of in depth knowledge that you need to gain with projects okay then you need to learn about apis you need to learn about restful apis you need to learn about microservice architectures so most of you who will be learning from any program or something like that keep that in mind that they are not teaching you monolithic architectures monolithic architectures is basically creating an entire giant backend application that handles everything okay so one server one backend application will handle your authentication will handle your payments will handle your uh, like data will handle your bookings everything will be handled by one application that is called as a monolithic architecture in microservice architecture you will have one api just for authentication one api just for handling payments one api just for handling videos one api just for handling your data itself so you are having an each of these apis can be written in any language but first start off with node js and express why because this is the mostly used language most see whatever i'm telling you right now for example somebody would be like django why why cannot we use django you can you can of course do that but first of all the courses on django are very less the number of people who are currently using django in the industry is very less so that makes you highly unlikely to be hired your main aim see if you want to just learn something go ahead learn anything that's totally up to you whatever i am saying right now is the from the perspective of placements whatever i am saying right now is from the perspective of placements okay so for placements if you want to make sure that when you are showing your pro, uh, like your profile to anyone he is like do i need to hire this particular person that is the profile that i want you guys to have at the end of the day people don't get selected so i got seven students in microsoft in google nine students in microsoft it was not because like they were doing anything you have to see you can study about quantum physics as well you can study about quantum physics as well but studying about quantum physics isn't going to make you go into iit okay you have to study for iit mains you have to study for iit je or iit advance you have to study for that the it's a particular it's a specific program it's a specific course it's a specific uh, syllabus that you are having to be able to do that to the best level that should be your aim so that you are able to get into good colleges similarly for these companies as well there's a hard bound a uh, different type of tools that you have to learn at the end of the day to make yourself have the highest probability to get hired okay so node js express mongodb in mongodb you have to learn mongoose as well of course because mongodb is just the concept at the end of the day okay you will have to learn like no sql is the concept mongodb is just the database to be able to interact with mongodb you need to learn about mongoose okay then api restful apis you need to learn about microservice architectures as well so that will be the back end web development that you have to learn now this is basically called as this particular developer who has learned all this is called as a moonstack developer 
okay this is called as a moon stack developer one of the most in demand developers right now is the moon stack developer itself but this is getting saturated most of the people currently in the industry who are learning full stack web development will learn only this much will only learn this much now if i'm having 100 positions that i want to hire someone i want to hire 100 people i am having 1000 different applications out of that 1000 different applications everybody who is applying will know at least this much at least this much everybody would be able to learn at the end of the day so everybody is a moon stack developer now how you are going to stand out from the rest of the crowd how your profile is going to be something that catches the eye of the recruiter that is where the concept of devops and cloud computing comes into place just developing a website isn't enough now using front end and back end web development you are able to develop a website okay but any website at the end of the day would be used by almost a million users at any point of time a zomato website is not used by just one or two developers or one or two users it is being used by a thousand or even millions of people at the same point of time now to be able to make sure that your app does not crash okay your app does not crash at any point of time it always functions no matter how many people are coming up okay so for example let's first try to understand what is cloud computing okay let's try to understand what is cloud computing now you cannot ha have servers inside your house okay so you cannot have like 10 laptops running at any point of time and that is basically catering to your users you don't have that each server costs about three to four lakhs each normal server will cost you three to four lakhs and you need a lot of servers to handle so many people some days you will have only 15 people some days you will have 1 million people so and each server can basically cater to like 10,000 20,000 different people itself so it's not practical to be able to maintain like thousand servers in your house will have a lot of money that you will have to invest so what big companies like google microsoft and amazon have done is they provide you with their own servers and they charge you for using their servers itself it's just like instead of buying a house you're renting a house itself on hourly basis or even on the minutes basis as well you can hire so you got just going to google you're saying that okay so there's the google cloud platform there's the aws okay that is amazon web services for uh, microsoft it is the azure itself okay so these are different cloud platforms that these guys are providing where you can go and just rent a server from them and deploy your moonstack application deploy your website to their servers right over there now for cloud computing my suggestion to you would be learn aws aws is currently occupying more than 70 percent of the entire internet the 70 percent of the entire internet works on aws aws has 50 percent more features than the rest than when compared to gcp when compared to azure it has 50 percent more features so if you are able to learn aws amazon web services then you will be able to use gcp you will be able to use azure very easily okay so aws should be your go-to cloud computing platform that you need to learn okay now for example you are renting six different uh, servers from aws you don't want to pay for those six different servers at all times okay sometimes maybe only 15 people are currently coming to your website so you need only one server maybe 1 million people are coming to your website in one hour so you need a thousand different servers so you cannot just like rent thousand different servers and move on from there you need to optimize your cost you need to lower the cost as well for that devops come into place so devops basically covers topics like docker okay kubernetes you are having ci cd integration so continuous integration and continuous deployment okay so all these different topics are devops topics that you need to know okay and then these are very important topics for example when you are developing a particular project on your own local laptop okay so maybe you are using node 14 version and the latest version is node 17 now if you are sending your code to someone else and he has node 17 on his platform then your code wouldn't work it will give errors so you want to make sure that your code irrespective of what machine you are having whether it be a macbook whether it be a, a ryzen whether it be intel whether it be a server anything that is there 
your code should work on all these platforms the exact same way without any errors irrespective of the platform that you are using okay so this is basically called as containerizing your code so think about it as a tupperware box and uh, air can um, how can i an airlock box so for example you are putting your food inside an airlock box you're packing it up right over here and shipping it out to everyone to use okay so that is the concept of docker okay it basically containerizes your code so that it works the exact same way everywhere so devops and cloud computing if you are learning these two topics along with moonstack you will be an excellent developer you will be one of the developers you, that is like very easy to get hired at any point of time are you guys able to understand please let me know see you cannot right now you cannot become a just a front-end developer think about it in such a way if i'm a company you are a company let's let's try take an example you are a company right now okay what would be better for you to hire four different people one front end engineer one back end engineer what devops engineer one cloud computing engineer or would you like to hire just one person who is able to handle every single thing and just pay a little bit more to him for example you are paying 10 10 10 10 lakhs to these four developers you are spending 40 lakhs or you want to hire just one person who is able to handle everything and pay him 25 lakhs which is better for a company please let me know which is better for a company please let me know guys just think about it think about it you being a company you want to hire four people paying 10 10 10 10 lakhs to each of them which is like the bare minimum that you have to pay for a software engineer or you just want to hire one person at 25 lakhs who is able to do everything for you So there is no full stack developer if you see if you are still being in the crowd itself okay if you're still being a part of the crowd if you're being the part of the sheep you will go into tcs and infosys you need to think about it do you want to earn three lakh rupees a year or three lakh rupees a month that is the difference of the mindset that you have to create that is the difference the, that is the only thing for example in the training and internship program that we have the average placements for full stack web development that we train so we train people in front end back end devops and cloud together the average placement was 13.7 lakhs with the highest package being 60 lakhs 60 lakhs that was the average that was the highest placement by google so just think about it you and i'm not telling you this from some made up numbers getting 4800 students placed in one year this is the number that we got we had students who just learned moon stack and they got packaged like six lakhs they got packaged like seven lakhs at the maximum and the students who learned everything their average package was 13.7 lakhs that's almost double almost double so that is the thing that you have to believe in see there's no escaping from hard work you cannot escape from it you have to prioritize what is your priority at the end of the day. Do you want to just do matragasti or like just do gulchalre with your friends at the end of the day and just go to TCS? Or do you really want to work hard and like prove yourself and get a package? Like see, it's not that people who don't go to into Google don't have friends. I am friends. Like I also went to Google. I also have friends. My friends are still in Google. They also have friends. So it's not that anything is different. It's that we are earning a lot more than those students who were not doing anything at the end of the day. You have to think about that. That's totally up to you. So this was basically a pathway for just full stack web developer. Now comes the main question. Okay. There are two types of companies that will hire you guys. For a full stack web developer, there are three pathways that you have. Two pathways in the main and one pathway has two other possibilities. See, I'm here to show you a mirror. That's it. That's my duty. The rest is up to you. And also provide a bit of mentorship as, if it's possible from my end. Okay. So just think about it. I'm telling you about the salaries. I'm telling you what are the different possibilities that you have as a full stack web developer. So full, again, sorry. Full, are you, what the fuck? Full stack web developer. Okay. You are having two different possibilities in the start. The first one is 
you are a freelancer okay you are a freelancer right over here and the second possibility is you are going to a job okay how many of you understand what is a freelancer can somebody let me know how many of you don't understand what is a freelancer that should be the question how many of you don't understand what is a freelancer guys i will be answering your questions one by one i just want to make sure that my points the mirror that i'm trying to show you guys you're very well aware of that mirror then i will be letting you i will give you guys enough time to answer each and every of your questions okay Just listen to me. I will be coming to DSA. I will be coming to CP. I will be coming to projects. I will be coming to your college grades. I will be coming to your college. Every single thing. Okay. So uh, don't know. Okay. So a freelancer is a particular person. He may or may not have a job. Okay. He may or may not be working somewhere, but he takes on clients. For example, Devtown wants a website to be built. Okay. Devtown is a particular company. It wants a website to be built. So I will contact a freelancer. Okay. I will contact a particular person. I will give him money. I will give him one or two lakhs. I will give him the project that, okay, can you make this project for me? And he will from his house, make that project for me, deliver that project. And then I will pay him for his work that he has done so that is basically called as a freelancer he's not associated he's not working for any company he's working for himself he may like he may be doing this on his free time okay he may be having a job he may not be having a job so he may be a full-time freelancer or a part-time freelancer so the first thing is a freelancer for a freelancer the only thing that he needs to be great as is full stack web development he does not need to care about uh, data structures and algorithms he does not need to care about uh, competitive programming he just needs to care about having a great portfolio of projects he needs to care about a great client he needs to care about being great at full stack that is what a freelancer should be great at okay that's it now freelancing is something that you need to like i said the main thing is you need to have a very 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 good portfolio of projects okay you need to have a very good portfolio of projects itself you need to work upon great projects at the end of the day what do you go so i will be coming back to great projects as well because that is a common topic between jobs and freelancers okay so i will be letting you guys know what i will consider as an excellent project okay so that is the basic definition of freelancer now how to start your freelancing jobs okay so for example you have a great portfolio of projects go to different websites upskill.com uh, uh, then you are having your freelancer.com having your uh, so quick weaver.com or something like that i also forgot the names right over there so you are having like uh, just search for freelancer website okay so you are having freelancer.com, upwork.com, hostinger.com, Webflow also has some, 99 Gurus has some, Fiverr has some. So there are like pay per hour. There are so many uh, freelancing websites. You just have to go there, create your profile, post the projects that you have worked on. What are the services that you are ready to give? Okay. And there will be people who will be approaching you and then you can take up their projects and work on them. But see, the point is if you are not able to work on their projects, if you are not credible, then it's of no use. Nobody is going to approach you. Okay. People can earn a lot. Like I also used to do a bit of freelancing in my early stages of full stack career itself and i used to earn like almost three lakhs a month just doing freelancing but it is a very tedious task you have to deal with clients you'll have to listen to a lot okay i used to like get callbacks in like ha in the at two in the night or three in the night i'm roaming somewhere i'm getting client calls and i have to answer them most of the clients will be us based because those will be the people who will be ready to pay you more as well so it's a very like yes you can enjoy a lot you will be able to gain a lot of experience but only if you have the right projects under your belt okay okay let's move on to jobs now there are two type of jobs that exist at any point of time okay one is a startup so for startups i consider it as like small scale startup like cred okay then the names that you have listened to at any point of time no startups that haven't picked up their ipos as of this particular point of time so these will be startup companies and then you are having like the big companies itself okay so you are having microsoft atlassian uh, google samsung geo nvidia all these type of companies okay the big companies itself now a startup 
who is not known to you okay like dev town may not be able to pay you that much because see dev town is a uh, non profit uh, platform okay we are a non profit platform so we don't have any money to actually pay someone so everything that you are able to see we develop it on our own so i give my own personal time to develop all the projects all the courses take up boot camps take up lectures take up the training program because like i said we are non non profit platform so we don't have any money that we are able to invest uh, into getting a developer at the end of the day so but there are startups who will be paying you to come and work for them but right over there the pay would be less the pay would be between for a full stack engineer it will be between 6 lakhs to 13 lakhs now both startups as well as companies like infosys okay tcs okay uh, accenture i'm considering all of them right over here in this category itself these companies will be paying you between so these companies will be paying you between 3 to 7 lakhs per annum okay startups will be able to pay you 6 to 12 to 13 lakhs per annum depending upon how big the startup is for these companies the only thing that you need to know is full stack web development okay that is more than sufficient you don't need to do anything more than that okay that would be just this much okay okay the next thing is the big companies okay the big companies will pay you big bucks of course like it starts from like 24 lakhs per annum for a flipkart developer so for flipkart i think so we got 21 students plays in flipkart so they got an average package of i think so 24 to 26 lakhs per annum so flip it will start from 24 to 26 lakhs per annum it will go up till 60 to 70 lakhs per annum depending upon which company are joining microsoft has increased its pay to 50 lakhs per annum Google is paying 60 lakhs per annum. So that is the basic thing. Okay. Big, big companies has big bucks. It will be ready to pay you more as well. But the competition for these big companies is immense. Okay. You need to know a lot for these big companies. So for example, you, you need to, so let's start off with the big companies itself. So for big companies, you need to know, first of all, one language. Okay. That is, you need to choose between C++ or Java. Don't choose any other language. Don't ask me that. Can I do it in JavaScript? Can I do it in Go? Can I do it in Python? Can I do it in some other language? I've already told you guys. Choose between C++ or Java. Don't choose anything else. Okay. Choose between C++ and Java. Don't choose anything else. My preferable language is C++. I usually do everything. All my DSA and CP in C++ itself. That is my preferable language. But if you already know Java continue with that okay don't change the language again these are done for dsa and cp if you are choosing javascript or you're choosing python for your dsa and cp these languages are development language they have a lot of depth to them these javascript and python has a lot of depth to them for the first interview that i had was in de shop okay that was the first interview that i gave i went into the interview that was the first time I realized never to put JavaScript and Python on your resumes. Till now, I have never put these two languages on my resume. I put my uh, machine learning, I put deep learning, I put a web development as well. Even after four years of experience in the industry, I never put these two languages on my resume. Because these two languages are in so much depth that they can just go in and in and in into that language and you will never be able to answer them properly. So that is the reason why choose a language that is shallow, just like C++ or Java. It's easier to answer them properly as well. Your aim is to crack these companies. I'm telling you the shortest way possible. The next thing that you need to focus upon is data structures and algorithms. DSA, data structures and algorithms in that chosen language of yours. Okay. So for example, you are starting with arrays. Okay, you have completed C++, then you move on to arrays in DSA. You learned a bit of arrays, first of all. Then you move on to the competitive programming in arrays. Okay, my uh, suggestion to you would be take up lead code. Lead code or code chef. Okay, take up lead code or code chef. Don't go anywhere else. Okay, don't go on Hacker Earth and Hacker Rank. They give you a false sense of entitlement. That is everything that you will be able to get. No knowledge, nothing whatsoever from the placement perspective. Take up code chef and code forces. 
कोड फोर्सेज इज फॉर गॉड लेवल पीपल इवन आई डोंट गो ऑन कोड फोर्सेज ओके लीड कोड एंड कोड शेफ इज मोर दैन सफिशियंट ओके लीड कोड एंड कोड शेफ फॉर दोज हु आर एमिंग फॉर एमेजॉन एज अ कंपनी ओके वी हैव अ अनसेड रूल राइट ओवर यूर इन डेफ टाउन ट्रेनिंग इफ यू आर एमिंग फॉर एमेजॉन बिकॉज वी नो दैट ओके थर्टी पीपल एमेजॉन इज गोइंग टू हायर फ्रॉम अस सो द थर्टी पीपल दैट वी शॉर्ट लिस्ट फॉर एमेजॉन वी जस्ट टेल दैम दैट भाई यू आर अ वेरी गुड प्रोग्रामर आई नो दैट just we are giving you a list of these questions this is the question that is going to be asked to you on amazon interviews just open this on lead code and just solve them that is more than sufficient okay so again for again i'm see you will be asking me what about geek for geeks what about this what about that i don't care i'm telling you the shortest way the best possible method code chef the exams that currently go on the practice that currently goes on code chef okay and lead code these are the only two things that you need to focus upon okay the second thing is so for example it is you learnt in the dsa then you come to cp you do some questions practice dsa and cp as well as full stack it's all about uh, practice okay it's all about practice if you are not practicing on a daily basis you ain't going to good do shit with anything okay it's already about practice guys only practice 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 nothing else nothing else is going to help you guys out okay you need to practice every single day take out 2 hours 1 and 1/2 hours mark it up set up an alarm tell your parents tell your friends lock up your door nobody is going to disturb me throw your phone outside the room take up your laptop and just sit and do dsa and cp for that 2 hours or 1 and 1/2 hours don't spend it on anything else every single day positively no matter if it's your birthday if it's a sunday it's a saturday it's your parents anniversary it's just 6 months 6 months of dsa and cp 6 months of giving 1 and 1/2 hours to 2 hours on a daily basis will guarantee you a placement of 20 lakhs plus what do you want in your life anything more than that just think about it okay the second thing that you need to work upon is projects okay the second thing that you need to know work upon is projects itself now projects are basically you can choose anything if you want to go into data science go into data science if you want to go into full stack web development go into full stack web development that is totally up to you okay now my suggestion to you would be if you are not from a good college if you are not from a tier 1 or tier 2 college okay what do you mean by tier 1 and tier 2 where good companies are coming to their placements okay if you are not from a good college you are from a tier 3 college always choose full stack web development always like you don't even have to think about it you don't even have to think about it if you are from a tier 3 college choose full stack web development without any doubt okay if you are from a tier 1 or a tier 2 college just like iits nits bits all these different colleges that are tier 1 and tier 2 then you have that choice you can choose between data science and full stack again i'm repeating myself if you are from a tier 3 college you don't have any choice you have to choose full stack web development if you are from tier 1 and tier 2 colleges that is iits nits bits then vit main campus mit main campus then you can choose between data science and full stack without that don't move further okay move further with full stack web development itself now what do you call a full stack web development a good project a good project in full stack web development hacker earth hacker rank don't use that use lead code or code chef itself again see i'm not here to do any kind of promotion i'm not affiliated with to them i don't i don't get any money for that as well okay that is the basic truth of what exists right now okay full stack web development you just need one project under your belt just one project to conquer it all you don't need a lot of different things in full stack just one project to show your skills in everything so just take up any website take up facebook let's take up facebook for example just clone the fuck out of facebook you make a clone out of facebook at the exact same uh, website using react js mongodb node js express then dockerize it containerize it put it up on our kubernetes cluster uh, create a ci cd uh, like pipeline planning for it put it up on aws this should be just one project that you should have under your belt that is more than sufficient 
Now that one project, if you are doing on your own, that it will take you almost nine months. Uh, okay, if you don't have the guidance, but yeah, you should have only one project under your belt. That is more than sufficient in full stack. I don't want to see the same projects, man. Okay, yeah, the portfolio website. Okay, the recipe API. These are these are something that I used to do in my first year of college. I don't care about these projects, man. You need to stand out from the rest of the group. You need to show just one project that the interviewer is so impressed with that showcases all your all your uh, skills at the end of the day okay it should showcase all your skills at the end of the day and that should be your focus okay because you need to showcase your react js more your backend web development your uh, devops concepts your cloud computing concepts in just one in just one project okay because you need to showcase that I know all these different things and I'm able to interconnect them as well. I'm able to connect them with each other as well. Okay. Are you guys able to understand? You need to interconnect them and you need to make sure that are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. You should be able to showcase that I'm able to, I'm not just able to learn this, but I'm able to use this on a practical sense as well. Okay. That is a thing that is totally different from the rest of the crowd you have to work upon okay and after that you can start applying to different companies okay and then it is very easy get some internships under your belt get some training under your belt do some freelancing in your college it's very easy to get freelancing you will be able to get some pocket money as well okay so it'll be easy for you okay are you guys able to understand please let me know Great. The next thing that exists is uh, so I have the roadmap as well for you guys. So this is the website that is we have created for the industrial training program that we have. You can just go and download the syllabus from right over here. You will easily be able to see that we have put up the entire pathway right over here. Okay. Chandigarh University classify it as a tier two college. Okay. That means you have the choice to choose between data science and full stack. Okay, so right over here, I have put up the syllabus as well. So you're able to see that you need to start off with C++. You need to go into intro to programming with C++, mathematics, bit manipulation, recursion, arrays, sorting, searching, matrix, hashing, strings, link list, stack, queues, dequeues, trees. Okay, you need to go into BST, heaps, graphs, greedy algorithms, backtracking, dynamic programming, try, segment and binary industries, disjoint sets all these different things you have to do it okay you don't have any choice both in dsa as well as in competitive programming then you need to start off with the web development fundamentals go start off with web development protocols like http https html css get github version control responsive design with css get box layouts tailwind css bootstrap css javascript es6 okay that is the basics that you have to cover in the basics of web development fundamentals these will be the tech stack that you need to cover at the end of the day okay then you need to proceed further with the front-end web development with the react okay component lifecycle models react functional components everything i've listed here for you guys every single thing that you need to learn okay the next thing that you need to focus upon is topics in backend web development, MongoDB, Express, microservices, integrating Node.js, validation and error handling, RESTful APIs, authentication and security, all these different things. Okay. Then you need to cover up with DevOps. So DevOps again, like I said, Docker and containers, volume, compose, containerizing, sync. Okay. You need to go on with CI, CD. Okay. Then you need to move on with Kubernetes, so create commands, multi-container applications, custom domains, all these different things you need to cover. And then at the end, AWS and CI CD. So that already includes in DevOps itself. So these are everything that you need to cover at the end of the day, guys. You have to do it. You don't have any other options. Okay. Okay. So one uh triple it darwad i have no idea guys i have no idea lpu i will consider that as well into tier two college itself okay so just think about it on what is that you want at the end of the day 
okay delhi university again tier 1 tier 2 itself okay now the second thing is why we started dev town so we understand that all these different things is something that will be very difficult for you guys to do it on your own and with that kept in mind we created dev town so we understand that learning all these different things is a lot of time and efforts that you have to put up at the end of the day if you guys want you can definitely join the training and internship program that we have so like i said we are a non profit platform so what we do is we bring in instructors from different companies as you are able to see we bring in people from amazon google codechef mckinsey and company morgan stanley american express tensorflow sony goldman sachs hp porsche me myself i am from jio reliance oracle cisco so bring bring in uh, the best instructors in the industry now of course when these guys are coming up we need to pay them as well because these guys aren't going to give their time to teach you guys everything for free so they charge around 5000 rupees per kid from us so we charge like 7500 rupees to the students so that we are able to pay the taxes and the instructor as well so basically what we do is we conduct this 3 month long training programs so we have this 3 month long like it's like 13 weeks of training that we conduct in which we have 2 hours 1 and a half to 2 hours of live classes on zoom every single day every day for 5 to 6 days a week for 13 weeks we have the classes in which these instructors come up live every single day to teach you guys they will solve your doubts and everything as well we prepare you for interviews we prepare you for com uh, competitive programming for data structures and algorithms all the different topics that i mentioned we train you in everything from the scratch the only prerequisite that we have for this particular program is just english that's it that's it and nothing else it's just english right over here we don't and we handle interview preparation how to create your resumes github linkedin every single thing along with that we have our own placements as well like i said we place almost 90% of our students from the last batch into companies like google microsoft atlas amazon samsung jio every single place during the entire program we have a lot main number of projects as well as are able to see the projects that you will be doing during the program will be book my show zomato front end zomato back end book my uh, book management api we have personal portfolio task management apps and the rest as well so that is the entire program that we have of 3 months 2 hours every single day every single day okay you can find this particular uh, pdf on our website at devtown.in right over here and you will be able to see the syllabus and everything from right over there the cost of the program is 7500 we charge 5000 that the instructor is charging us because if somebody is coming from google to teach you every single day for one and a half hours it, we have to pay them as well and they will be teaching you every single day on zoom live along with that after the end of the class we provide you the recordings of the classes as well so that you guys are able to like if you are missing out on a particular class you can just revise it or at a later point of time if you want to revise something you are able to do that as well okay Are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys uh so we guarantee a placement as well uh, because like of course if you are doing well we guarantee you the placements and we have students so for example for first second and third year students we uh, guarantee them internships at different companies for the fourth year students we guarantee them direct placements uh the second thing along with that is this is a training as well as an internship so at the end of the day you get certified via us for a training as well as an internship where you have done a particular project that is the zomato clone at our company so you will get a letter of recommendation and offer letter and internship completion letter at the end of the day as well okay it's a 3 month long program 13 uh, weeks okay so it's a huge program at the end of the day okay but yes we have just limited seats we only have like 60 to 70 seats in each batch we cannot have more than that many number of seats so that the instructor is able to focus upon every single student at the end of the day 
okay so we have like we take 60 students one of the batches is going to start from the 30th of uh, june and the second batch is going to start from the 15th of june itself 15th of july so 30th of june and 15th of july that are the two batches that we are having as of this particular moment just for the boot camp students we have it at 7500 okay just for the boot camp students normally it's like 10000 rupees but for boot camp students we get some uh, discounts via google and microsoft so basically these companies are hiring through us so to make sure that we are able to subsidize the uh, amount for you guys they basically pay us so that we are able to provide some scholarships and just reduce the amount for you guys at the end of the day okay so that is the entire thing but like i said we only have like 60 uh, ba strength of 60 in the june uh, 30th batch and then a strength of 60 in the july uh, 15th batch i just wanted to know how many of you are interested for the same so that according to that i will be able to understand that okay do we need to contain more batches or not do we need to start more batches or not so those people who are interested in the same please let me know so that we are able to understand the same Thirty June, okay. Thirty June, three zero June, and fifteenth July. How many of you guys are interested in the same? Please let me know. So that I'm able to understand, like, okay, how many of people are interested? Because, like I said, the seats are limited. We don't have enough seats for everyone. So, like, it will be first come first basis itself. That is the reason why. those who are interested please let me know so that i'm able to understand if there are a lot many number of students and we will have to create new batches as well uh, we need to get more instructors so i'm one of the instructors that teach right over there okay okay so i'm able to see some of the students are interested for the same okay no issues in that okay so let's do one thing those students who are really interested in, interested for the same only those students i'm providing you with my whatsapp link okay this is my whatsapp link uh i don't pick up any calls that's why i'm providing a whatsapp link those who are interested for the same and those who want to enroll themselves or those who have any questions as well they can definitely approach me on this whatsapp number Okay, like I said, we are a non-profit organization, but we cannot get a person from Google to give three months of his life and giving two hours every single day and not pay him anything. So he also is like, he's giving his time after Google. So he has to be paid a lot. Okay, like I said, placement is included with this. You can go to our graduates page and check out all the students that we have placed up till now okay so i'm providing you with my whatsapp number as well right over here you can definitely contact me on whatsapp okay send me a message i will help you out with the same as well okay you don't have to worry about it we have students who join us in our first second third fourth year we have students who are joining us from btech msc bsc uh, mtech btech uh mca bca so that is totally up to you because these companies don't look at colleges these companies don't look at anything else these companies look at only do you have the right skill set do you have the right knowledge at the end of the day and yes are you able to work <laughs> that is also something that of course they will be looking at okay so i have also provided you guys with my whatsapp link okay you can definitely approach me on my whatsapp number right over there yes we have an emi option also available okay because we are able to understand that uh so definitely those who are interested or those who have any questions related to the same as well you can definitely approach me on my whatsapp number and i've already provided you with the link for the same as well okay yes like i said first second third fourth year, year students anyone can apply anyone can join i am totally able to understand for that okay okay so again there are two batches currently the 30th june batch and the 15th july batch 
if you guys are interested do contact me if you are a boot camp student like i said the uh, 7500 is just for the boot camp students itself we don't give it to anyone else because you guys are a part of the boot camp that is the reason why those who are interested do approach me uh, otherwise as well i'm always available to help you guys out these boot camps will always be for free you can definitely join these boot camps you will continue learning at the end of the day as well we created this because anywhere else if you are looking at any similar program as well it will cost you about 2.5 lakhs okay we'll start from 50000 it will go up till 2.5 lakhs you can go and check that out as well so because we are able to do it at cost that is the reason why our program is for so cheap otherwise like if you are going anywhere else you will be able to see the prices right over there okay okay so i've already given you guys the uh, whatsapp link and today's attendance link i will show it to you guys this is for every year student okay we have first year second year third year fourth year student joining us okay see the uh, more early that you are able to join that's basically great okay i'm a 2020 you um, pass out yes you can definitely join third year students again yes like i said you can join now i will definitely suggest students who are currently in 10th 11th and 12th standard this is not for you okay this is only for college students and greater on as well but not for 10th 11th 12th students you should focus upon your je mains and advanced not on this okay so sure. those people who are join who uh, want to join they can definitely join for the same like i said okay I've already provided you guys with the WhatsApp uh, link as well. Those who are interested can definitely contact me on my WhatsApp number, and I will personally help them out with the same. Okay. You sure you can join the thirty eighth June batch as well? That's totally up to you. The classes in the training program will be in the evening after seven uh, o'clock itself, after six or seven, because these people who are going to come and train you guys will be working the entire day in Google or other uh, companies as well. So they have their time in e evening itself. That is why the classes will be in the evening. Okay. like i said you don't have to be from an it field we have people from civil chemical mechanical so one of the students who got into google was from mechanical field so you don't have to be from an electrical field itself you can be from any circuital field you can be from any field the only thing that they care about is your skills okay because these companies are directly hiring from us they just give us a number that we need to hire 15 students and they hire from us directly so that is the reason why they don't care about that they only care whether you know stuff or not okay okay so let's move on from right over here i have to take up another boot camp as well i am late for that thank you so much guys we'll meet tomorrow okay thank you